Hi, this is Brandon from Tate Talk Tech, back here again with another video. Today I'm going to be continuing the Linux virtualization series. I'm going to be covering how to complete a VM install on a headless Linux server. So when I set up my home server uh, for virtualization, it's a Linux headless server. Well, one of the things that I just didn't anticipate as I was going through all of this was having to go through the install process on a virtual machine. Now, when you're doing the install process on a virtual machine, it does require a graphical user interface. Now, I'm sure there are ways to go ahead and actually to set up the full install without actually having to without actually having to use the GUI, but that's not something at this point that I have com I have discovered. Now, there is a tool called Vert Builder, which I'm still debating on whether I want to cover or not, uh, which comes with its its own kind of issues and things like that. Um, but I'm not going to be covering that at this stage. I'm not sure if that's something I will cover in the future, but it is something that is available. But I really want to focus on, I really want to focus on, you know, just kind of, you know, using, you know, Linux as a virtualization uh, platform and, you know, kind of the trials, tribulations, and all the stuff that comes along with that. So um, I'm going to show you what I experience and how I came to this. And that's how I do most of these videos is I do them based on stuff that I'm like, well, how do I do this or how do I do that? And I go and figure it out and then I'm like, okay, cool. Let me go share this with some people because this is probably going to be helpful. If I'm looking for it, there's probably some other people that are looking for it as well. So because um, really up to this point, you know, before I completely set up the server headless, I had you know been using a server with a GUI. So, you know, I hadn't really run into this problem. It wasn't one that I really anticipated. So you're probably asking, what are the tools? Well, one of them is Vert Viewer, and the other one is going to be VNC uh, with the option of doing it um, with SSH local port forwarding. Now, I'm going to be showing you um, the version with SSH local port forwarding just because that's I prefer to do things over an encrypted tunnel if I can. Uh, so just keep, um, that's why I'm showing it to you, and I'll cover that more in detail in, a, in uh, the later part of this video. So yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and show you today how to set up to finish the installation of a VM on a headless virtualization server. I'm not going to be covering the install process of a VM. I've got a video on that, so make sure to go check out that video if you have questions on installing a virtual machine in Linux. All right, so, but before I go ahead and get into the content today, I've got a favor to ask. If you like this type of video and want to see more content like this, make sure you are subscribed and hit the bell button for notifications. Uh, so let's get started. All right, so the first thing that we're going to cover is using Vert Viewer. I've already got the install process started on my remote home server. So we don't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to cover that here, but I am going to show you how to access that, how to, how to complete the install using Vert Viewer. So, okay, so let's go ahead and start with the command. All right, so of course the command is Vert Viewer, and then we're going to do tax C. Uh, tax C is allowing us to use a URI or URL. Uh, which is which is what we have right here, the QEMU plus SSH uh, colon uh, slash slash B at, you know, the IP address and then slash system. We're using, that is a, a uniform resource uh, link, I think. And the other one is un uniform resource indicator. Um, don't quote me on that, but I believe that's what they stand for. And um, yeah, and then here we actually have the name of the, of the virtual machine. So, when we're putting in this, when we're putting this URI, is we're putting in there QEMU plus SSH. Just think about this as you know, when you're looking at your browser, this is going to be HTTPS. Same thing, just different, just different thing is working here behind the scenes. In this case, it's QEMU over SSH, and then we're going to go ahead and do that into at user B at uh, IP address 192.168.1. Uh, 136, and then we're going to go ahead and do that at the system level. Now, w here where you're seeing slash system, you have two options that are going to be available. Well, there's multiple options, but when you're doing this method, you were um, as we're talking about as we're talking about it today, you're either going to have session or system. Now, the difference between these two is it it's all based on how you want the libvirt daemon to run. So if you do it with system, it's going to run with it's going to run with libvirt daemon uh, permissions, which is typically what you want because it's going to give you the full experience of utilizing the virtual machine. The other option, session, is is going to run it with the permissions of the user. Now, if you're just a regular user, you know you're probably going to have some limitations as far as what you can do in your VM, and depending on your on your on your permissions, you may not be able to run that VM at all. So 
um, keep that in mind. Now, the default when you're doing an install, if you don't specify this, is going to be system. So if you're not setting it to session manually, then you should be good with system, unless that's been configured in some other way. Um, but just just um, just look at the documentation, and that should tell you if um, what the default is, and that would just be the man page for a viewer, because it can sometimes vary depending on the distribution implementation. All right, and all right, yeah. So then what you'll do is you'll just go ahead and run this. Now, one other thing is you don't have to put the VM name at the end. If you don't put anything, it'll give you a pop-up and then it'll have you select the VM and then just hit enter. But I'm, I prefer to do it this way so then I don't have to worry about that. And then let's go ahead and just hit enter. And as you can see there, we have our virtual machine popped up and here it is ready for the install process. So easy peasy. All right, now, before moving on to SSH with local port forwarding, uh, don't forget to give this video a like if you liked it, give it a dislike if you did not like it. Lastly, let me know what you like, don't like, and if you have any questions down below in those comments. So let's go ahead and move on here. I'm gonna go ahead and close this out, and we're gonna go ahead and move on to the SSH with local port forwarding. All right, so I've got that here. Now, what's happening here? All right, so of course, we're SSHing into it, uh, we're SSHing into this um, um, the virtualization server, and we're using the TAC capital L, which is going to allow us to do local port forwarding. So essentially, what we're doing here is we're saying like, hey, any this you're setting up this local port on your machine, and you're saying like, hey, like any and you're you're requesting information from port 5900 on the remote machine. Now, what you're asking this to do, you see this IP address in the middle. Is you're saying, hey, remote, mach remote machine, you've got stuff that's going to be coming in on port 5900. I want that. So go ahead and forward it to localhost, and then go ahead and, and that will go ahead and, and, and localhost will go ahead and forward it to uh, my machine on port uh, 5900. Right? And the reason that we're using localhost here, or 127.0.0.1, is because there's, we're accessing the virtualization server uh, di uh, directly. Now, if you had a, like a proxy or an SSH server in front of that, in that case, in that particular case, this would be the SSH server or the proxy, and then this would be the actual virtualization server IP. So, um, if that's something that you want me to cover in more detail in the future, I'd be happy to go ahead and consider doing that. So, just let me know in a comment down below. All right. So, let's go ahead and execute this and what it's going to do is it's actually going to create a SSH session. So we're actually now connected. So now you're probably wondering, okay, so how do I connect to the VM, right? You're going to need a VNC client. Now, if you're using a Linux machine, uh, you can use uh, just Romina and just select VNC. I believe on Windows, it's uh, you can just download real VNC. R-E-A-L-V-N-C. I believe that's the one that I use on my Linux machine. I don't do it. For, I'm sorry, on my Windows machine. I don't SSH into, um, I'm sorry, I don't VNC into things very often from my Windows machine. So don't quote me on that, but I believe it's real VNC. So, and essentially what you're going to do here is in your inside of your client is you're going to go ahead and request it to IP address 127.0.0.1 and port 5900, which is exactly what we put here. So then what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and do that. And then we're going to go ahead and enter and then boom, it's going to pop up. And there we go. We've got our, our graphical user interface. Now, if you've used Spice before, VNC is not as good as Spice. Um, it's just sometimes the just doesn't it's moving around and it's not as smooth. Like it's if you stare at it a lot for long periods of time and you have high refresh rate monitors like I do, you tend to notice this stuff. But um, keep in mind if you're using VNC, you're only going to be um, you're only going to be restricted to that if you're if you're if you're using Red Hat. Now that's the reason I put this in here is this is going to be mostly for accessing you know a red hat remote system now any other any other Linux server use the vert viewer method so that you can go ahead and finish the install that way and keep in mind you're going to need you're also going to need to make sure that you have SSH access to these servers if it's just like oh yeah random random SSH I'm sorry random virtualization server I need to access this VM 
and you're you're you know and it's denying you well you know if you don't have permissions on there and you don't or you don't have any you know username and password there then that's you know why you're having the issue so keep that in mind now about the port 5900 now by default vnc runs on port 5900 but that's not always necessarily going to be what it's set to now a lot of people use uncommon port numbers so they can kind of hide this kind of stuff so it's not uncommon to see it on other ports now how do you how do you get that port number is you'll go over to your you'll go over to your uh, you'll be on the virtualization server and you'll go ahead and just do verse you're going to do dump xml and then we're going to do ooh, and we'll do test and then we're going to do a grep and then we're going to go ahead and do vnc all right and that tells us right here it's going to listen on um, it's going to listen on its local host and it's going to use port 5900 so this is how you can get the actual port that that virtual machine is going to be using because if you try to go into 5900 and this one said it i don't know 2701 you're going to be like, okay, well, why can't I access this? Because you need to make sure that you're using the right port. You can really, honestly, you can use any any of the, you know, any port that you want, you know. So it could be port one. <laughs> you know, it could be port, you know, 10,375. You know, so um, be mindful of that. All right, perfect. So, yeah, that uh, this process is, you know, why templates are a thing you know because that makes thing using things so much easier now um sorry kind of like for that abrupt segue into that but you know it was going through this process that i realized that you know this is why we do templates because it's so much easier just to do a template than it is to sit here and go through this especially if you're you know working in headless servers and a lot of enterprise environments and business environments that is the case you don't have a gui because that's wasting unnecessary resources you know so that that's definitely something that you um, you know, this is, you know, this is definitely something that is a thing, you know, so and for more information on that, I actually have a video on templates. So go check that out if you want more information on that. And then I've also did another video on interacting with your virtual machine earlier in the series. So go check out that video if you want uh, more ways to interact with your, your VM. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. So thank you very much for watching my video and have the greatest of days.